Welcome back to a beautiful site here in Naples, Florida at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships for 2018. We get set for the 5-0, 19-14 age range coming up and should have just a fabulous match. The pickleball capital of the world here in Naples. So serving it will be Merchant and Pointer. Altoff Merchant will serve. He is in the orange. His partner is Brian Pointer on the bottom left. And since Brian is wearing a gray shirt, we can just refer to the gray shirt, not the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a quick side out, and Matthew Kawamoto is about to serve here with the white hat. His partner, Ernesto Fajardo in the blue hat. A considerable height advantage for Fajardo. Uh, both these players have one player that is uh, rather tall and another one who's uh, not quite so tall. Perhaps a little speedier around the court. I think you relate to the not so tall, don't you? Uh, I w I'd yeah, I think you too, Melissa. I know, me I know. Too. I was hoping you weren't going to call me out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great shot by Pointer right up the middle. Sometimes that's uh, early on in the game, a great strategy to hit through the middle before the team has really sort of settled in and figured out exactly how they're going to handle those middle balls. Who's going to take them? It's a side out, and Merchant is serving. Just a little bit wide there from Brian Pointer. On the other side, Ernesto Fajardo, only 18 years old. And this is their first U.S. Open, both of them. Actually, all of them. It's the first U.S. Open for all four players. So, Kalamoto's fired up already. I can tell you <laughs> that I'm expecting to see a lot of points like that. Neither of these teams, I watched both their semifinal matches, neither of these teams are going to um, be conservative. They're going to go for fastballs when they think they have a chance to catch their opponents off guard or um, cause some trouble. There's another example. This game has such a friendly and social vibe to it, Melissa, but, but these matches can get a little heated too, can't they? Oh, sure, they can. Uh, pickleball is known as a game of sportsmanship, though. Mm -hmm. So we don't, have, we don't have too much of that, but certainly some emotions can get the best of people. Guess that shows they're still human. <laughs> and we have some emotions flowing out there on the side of Fajardo and Kawamoto. Yeah, they get fired up pretty. I mean, they're young guys, right? They're sure. young, fiery guys. Mm -hmm. um, this is their first U.S. Open. They care about this. They're excited. They've got a huge Canadian contingent here cheering for them. Um, to me, it'll be interesting to see whether they can keep their nerves in check early on and uh, not go for too much too soon. that time. To me, one of the, the deciding factors in this match is likely going to be which team can weather the storm against those um, attacks from their opponents when that ball comes fast. I'm expecting to see one any time here. There it is. Okay, and that was in. So that's a good example of um, Ernesto Farhada using speed against his opponents, particularly when he's not really expecting it. We call that a flick. It worked well that time. Yeah, and I think one of the other things we should point out, Mark, is the format here at the U.S. Open. This is a consolation format, so that means that both teams here have not lost a match. Whoever wins gold or wins here gets gold, and the other silver. That's right. Sometimes you see in tournaments where um, if you lose a match, you go down to the loser's side of the tournament, but you can earn your way back into the gold medal match. That's not the case this year here at the into U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Um, if you lose, you got no chance for gold. So these guys are undefeated so far. Uh, called out by the linesman. Big smile from Ernesto Fajardo. Had a chance to chat with these young men before the match and just thrilled to be here, smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> and doesn't hurt that they get a little national television exposure to go with it. Absolutely not. And it's great to see all kinds of ages, Drew, uh, playing pickleball. It is a lifetime sport. 
We have a lot of athletes playing pickleball who were former professional golfers, tennis players, racquetball players, badminton players, uh, played at high collegiate levels, people who played, uh, played professionally. So transitioning in and what they'll tell you is it allows them to continue being competitive even past the prime of for the sport in which they were competing at a high level. Oh, oh, these volleys. Just take your breath away. Mm -hmm. yeah, Both so teams that, going at it. So that rally had a few examples of great athleticism. Here you'll see a high backhand smash, being able to receive these balls quickly and still find a way not just to get them back in the court, but get them back in a way that your opponents can't continue the attack. is um, It's tough. It's all the quick shot there. The, the grip, so important how the racket is, is gripped. The continental grip, would you say, better than the Western grip, Mark? So, actually, that's another example of where things are evolving. Mm -hmm. As players are looking to hit balls with more speed, the continental grip, or holding the handle almost as if you're holding a hammer, you're seeing players use it less and less um, because it opens the paddle face, and if you're hitting with an open paddle face, it's tough to brush up the back of the ball. Mm -hmm. So you start to see a little bit more of what we call an Eastern forehand or an Eastern backhand grip, mainly so they can hit with spin, so they can also hit the ball hard and keep the ball in play. Merchant is not happy with that call, but the lines person called it wide, and it looks like the referee is sticking with his team. Yeah, and Brian's gonna have to shake that off. I know he really felt the ball was in. It was a great rally. Shake There's it off and get right back in the point. So there's an example of a third shot drive. It's a third shot that's fast, that's low, and it's designed to challenge the timing of your opponents. Calmon has got a great third shot drive, and I expect to see him use it more often. One point lead for Merchant Pointer. along that time. Yeah, and, and Brian tried to go at the body of Fajardo, and he, and, and the, if you don't if you don't hit the body mark and they step out of the way, that ball is probably going long. Well, that's the risk, right? If you hit hard um, and it's it's not very low over the net, if your opponents step out of the way or you know, if you can't hit them, then that's going to be their point. So you're taking a risk when you do that. Um, you better be precise. I agree. Yeah, and here's an opportunity for Fajardo and Kawamoto to take advantage of, uh, of uh, two backhands in the middle. Well, not now. They were. You know, I was thinking about that as well. Um, Merchant in the orange shirt, he's got a great backhand. I watched him attack again and again and again off of his backhand side. So one of the things to consider, while a lot of um, recreational players might see their backhands as liabilities, you see a lot of these strong uh, pickleball players, especially those who come from other sports like badminton or table tennis where the backhand is used a lot, be able to generate a lot of speed off that backhand side. Hmm. That was a really nice shot. A uh, drop by, by Brian Pointer and Kawamoto handled it perfectly. And oh, wow, what a great exchange there, Mark. They were really going after Pointer that time. I think he responded and said, hey, not on my watch. Yeah, he sure did. He kept that paddle up, and he felt early on, this, this is going to be mine. Just a little bit of a communication issue there, Mark, or what do you think was happening there? Well, what's happening here is Fajardo and Kalmoto are targeting Brian Pointer. They're making him play most of the balls, and Pointer and Merchant realize this. Merchant was looking to poach a little bit, and that opened up his side of the court. Kalmoto and Fajardo uh, played it back cross court out of his reach. Uh. Melissa and Mark, you guys have played in so many matches. When you are that player that they are going after, that they are trying to exploit, how do you respond? Because it's got to gotta make you feel, uh, I guess, not the greatest. Well, I know for me, and, and Mark, uh, he'll have a different view of this than I will, but for me, I'm seeing what is it that I can do to help get my partner into the game. Sure. So some of that pressure will come off of me. Um, because once you're in that position, you feel like a couple of lines have pounced on you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's very difficult to uh, turn that around. Well, this is where we talked earlier about what separates sort of the top players from the rest, and it's not being able to hit 
one good shot, but it's being able to do it again and again and again to weather the storm. You know that ball's coming at you. You know your opponents think you're the weakest one on the court. And um, and can you mentally stand up to that? That's that's the challenge here. So much of a mental game it is here at this Minto U.S. Pickleball Championships. You can look at all tough merch and obviously a very emotional player. Brian Pointer now will serve his partner. Yeah, I, the mental piece in pickleball is, is just as important as the physical piece. You play multiple matches. An entire bracket plays, Drew, in one day. Mm -hmm. This isn't like it plays over multiple days. So what Ernesto Fajardo did right there, uh, you can see him checking with his opponent, make sure he's okay. This is called a redirect. It looks like he's hitting a back cross court, but instead he flicks it down the line, catches the opponent, merchant off guard, hits him, puts up the hand to make sure he's okay. This is Kawamoto and Fajardo's fourth match of the day, and Merchant and Pointer's third match of the day. Mm. So that's right. I was talking with um, Merchant and Pointer uh, after their semifinal win, and they asked who won. I said, "Oh, the Canadian kids," and he said, "Great. Let's make this a Davis Cup style match." Oh, I like it. Canada versus the U.S. Wow. And see, that was one of the things I was talking about, Drew. He did a great job of that. Brian did. He pushed the ball down the line. Mm -hmm on uh, Fajardo, and really he had no nothing much he could do with it, and he popped it up and they were able to put it away. You can see here they're really picking on <laughs> Brian Pointer in the gray shirt. And the question is, and they're everyone on the, both teams are asking themselves, is Pointer going to be able to handle the challenge? Is he gonna be able to sustain the pressure throughout this game and into the next? Tough shot that yeah. time. That was a really tough shot. That was uh, well executed by Kawamoto. So lobs that you see here are incredibly risky shots. If you hit this ball a little too hard, it goes out. And if you hit a little too short, you get that coming back at you. Lobs are very risky. That's why you don't see them very often. We do have a bit of a breeze here uh, for folks that might just be tuning in. We had some rain come through yesterday. It pushed out the humidity, the Florida humidity, which can be quite intense and has just brought in a nice cool breeze here in Naples, Florida. In fact, I have a little chill right now, <laughs> Drew. <laughs> oh, great volley there. And the rally won by Fajardo. So we see again here this, this ability not just to attack, but to counterattack, to when you receive that fastball, to be able to hit one back effectively against your opponents. And so far, Kawamoto and Fajardo have been done a better job of counterattacking than Merchant and Pointer. There's an, oh, that's a miss. Yeah, so that was an enforced error there. I know he'd like to have that one back. So you can see that Pointer and Merchant are stacking, they're both standing on the same side and this is to make sure that when they get to play the rest of the point they can adjust and they can play the side that they like so it's quite clear early on that pointer is looking to play from the left side of the court while merchant in the orange is looking to play from the right it's time out well, it's certainly a game that has been defined by a lot of power so far 9-6 kawamoto and fajardo with a lead here in game number one official now having a little chat with both of our teams. I believe a fault was just issued. So this is a key moment here. They're only two points away, Kalmar and Fajardo, from taking this first game, which um, will really give them a lot of, lot of momentum. Yeah. And that ball just got a little bit up too high. And that may be a little bit of nerves from Altuff. This is game point right here. Kalamoto still picking on pointer. Let's see if he can handle the pressure here. Oh, right back. Yeah, Brian thought he saw an opening there between Kawamoto and Fajardo, and the opening closed very quickly. Yeah, I mean, 
this is what players do. Advanced players, they, they make you think that there's a spot there, right? Meanwhile, we call that sitting. You're sitting on the forehand, expecting that ball to come. So the game awarded to Fajardo and Kawamoto. 11-5. Game number two coming up right after this. The Canadians taking the first session here in Naples. It's 2021 and we have some good news for you. The Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are back on. So set your calendars for April 17th through the 24th for the biggest pickleball party in the world happening right in Naples, Florida. Make sure to like and follow both the US Open and Pickleball channel to stay up to date with all the latest US Open news. Beautiful beaches of Naples, Florida, the pickleball capital of the world. Not too far away here at East Naples Community Park, home of the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Drew Felios with Melissa McCurley and Mark Rennison also have 19 to 49 age range. Oh. The 5 O's going at it right now. Fajardo and Kawamoto with an early lead over Merchant and Pointer. Yeah, so Mark, what do you think in here? What do you think Merchant and Pointy are, are going to have to do to get to a third with Kawamoto and Fajardo? Well, one of two things needs to happen. Yeah. Either Pointer needs to be able to sustain the pressure a little bit better, which he did a great job of right there, or he and Merchant have to change the way they're playing a little bit so that uh, oh. Fajardo and Kawamoto can't get the ball to him as much. So that might mean trying to go on an offense a little bit sooner. It might mean having Merchant poach a little bit more. Um, but they've got to do something different. So either either keep doing the same thing and just execute better or change up the game plan a bit so uh, the Canadians can't keep doing what's working, which at that point, the Canadians kept doing what's working. Yeah. Really impressed by the play of Ernesto Fajardo right there. And that first game, I thought he was just fabulous. There's a yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. There is a good example. So Pointer used a third shot drive, and Merchant poached. He came across the middle, intercepting that ball. That, to me, is a different strategy and something that they could use effectively to relieve some of the pressure that Pointer is facing. And right here, what they're doing is trying to keep Merchant back. Mm. Merchant yeah. is trying to get his way forward. I mean, your opponents can get the ball back if they're back behind the baseline, but they can't usually do a lot of damage, right? And so if you can keep them back there until they give you something you can put away, uh, your odds are pretty good in winning the point. Still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Reminder for the viewers, you can only earn a point when your team is serving. So, so far it's been the receiving teams who win each point. Mm. And that's one way to win a point, is to hit the ball so it lands in play and then bounces out of the court. Ooh. No. Oh. No. Oh. The referee, let's see if the referee can overrule that. That, that ball was. The referee that is unlikely to overrule a car. Yeah, but here's the, the thing is, that's sideline. not that line judge's call right there. It's this line judge's call in front of us. And he's nodding his head as if he agrees. But I got to tell you, for I know we're not on the line like the line judges, but from here, it certainly, it certainly looked in. This line judge closest to us that has the call on that line said his view was blocked. I think there's still some. You're not the correct server. Yeah. Not the correct server. Yeah. Take one more look. The overhand. I thought this was in. Oh uh, wow! Clearly. I mean, wow. I mean. He hit on such an extreme angle and the ball bounced into the stands that for a lot of people, you can imagine, like, there's no way you could hit that ball and still have it stay in play. But the speed that he hit it at, the angle that he hit it at, and the fact that you have relatively low um, boxes at the side of the court means that that ball, as we saw, could easily be in and still bounce out of bounds. But Mark, there is an official sitting right next to that line that probably should have caught the ball. Except that, that the one sitting and what the what the lines person uh, gestured over to the referee is their vision was blocked. Sure. They weren't able to see it. So, and I guess in all that hoopla, there was some sort of fault. The wrong server. You know the officials in matches like this, <laughs> obviously easy targets. Oh. Yeah, and really the job of the official is to really be invisible uh, in a game like this. 
or any pickleball game for that matter. So the score is 1-3-1. One, one. Ernesto Fajardo serving. He's the first server of their partnership. And now it's going to the second server, Matthew Kaomoto at 1-3-2. One, It'll be interesting to see, Mark, how the team of Kawamoto and Fajardo, how they do um, if Merchant Point are able to gain some more momentum yeah. here. See yeah. how they handle that. Yeah, I mean, there's an example where Fajardo hit a ball that was otherwise going out of bounds. So, you know, sometimes you see these, um, these young guys get off to a quick start and then uh, sometimes might falter a little bit, but we'll find out. So Ernesto was what we call sitting on the backhand. He was expecting that ball. He was ready for it. And even though it was well struck and hard hit, he was all over that. You'll see it coming right here. He's waiting for the backhand, and it's an easy put away. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Just the poise of these youngsters. You would think that the veterans would have a clear edge, just experience. Oh, and that was some great, great concentration in hands there by Brian Pointer to keep them into that, into that point. Yeah, and, play. and Melissa, can you say something about what you mean when you say that someone has good hands? Um, the audience may not always know what that means. What are you, what are you describing when you, when you see something like that? Yeah, uh, for me, it's a multitude of things with the good hands. So it's good eye-hand coordination. It's good anticipation. It's having your paddle up. It's being ready that uh, any ball and every ball could be yours. The crowd really into this match. Yeah. Here's an example of um, the importance of being able to b hit both fast and slow. He had Merchant backed up, and then Kamoto just dropped it gently over the net. I think that's what you mean by good hands. That is totally what I mean by good hands. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is one of the... Well, this is one of the reasons that um, tennis tennis players have a big advantage, or anyone who comes from a paddle or a racket sport, because you're used to having that interaction between the implement you're hitting with and the ball. And so um, even if you're a high-level athlete from some other sport, if you don't have that background, you're at a considerable disadvantage in your pickleball career. So there's another good attacking shot from Ernesto Fajardo. And um, you could see that Merchant wasn't able to weather the storm, wasn't able to counterattack. And um, that's a, to me, that's a forced error. Oh, Pointer can't return it. You can see here that, um, that there's some sunlight now coming on to uh, the Zing Zang Championship Court. We've got this beautiful sunshade here that makes it much more comfortable for all the spectators and players, but that does mean that occasionally you'll get some interesting shadows on the court, and um, that can have an effect when these balls are coming as fast as they do. These two make up such a good combo, Fajardo and Kawamoto. Mark, I would say that both of them know exactly what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. There's not many, though. Yeah, there's not many weaknesses. Um, I mean, Kawamoto moves so well. Fajardo is so, I mean, for a big guy, he's got great touch around the net. He can put away those high balls, as we said. He can counterattack. And any, um, he's got great, I mean, that's a great example of anticipation. A lot of the viewers at home will be familiar with hitting what we call out balls, right? Balls that would otherwise be going out, and you hit it because you just react. Um, these players at this level, they are very good at knowing when a ball is going to go out and when they should let it go. Yeah, and I love the movement that they're that they're they're moving Merchant Pointer around uh, yep. a lot. And, and that's going to be a timeout. So seven four Kawamoto and Fajardo lead it in game number two on the break of a sweep. Well, you were looking at the side of the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships and. There's courts being built all over Naples and in most housing communities. Because Minto booming here in Naples. As homes going up rapidly around the area. Seven to four, Kawamoto with Fajardo. And in game number two, four points away from taking the championship. If Merchant and Pointer don't get a stop here, um, this match could end in a hurry. It's the second server, seven, four, two, Kawamoto serving. 
little short. There's a stop. So we'll see if they can get a momentum shift here. That was the stop that they needed, to your point. I expect to see Merchant be much more active on the court in the orange shirt, moving around, taking as many balls as he can. Oh, how about oh. that ball? Oh, yeah, I, that ball looked like it rolled partially on the side and then decided to go back on the other Took side. Took a seat right on top of the net and then decided, you know what? The, uh oh. <laughs> And they're probably thinking, you know, we really could have used that break. Yeah, here you see Merchant covering a lot more in the middle of the court. Yeah. But they as you not. move more, as you cover more of the court, that leaves more uh, openings. You're a little more exposed. And uh, Kamoto and Fajardo can take advantage of that. Could not take advantage of that side out. Now the youngsters go back to work. Uh -oh. oh, he just didn't get enough on that lob. So uh, Brian there was trying to get an offensive lob. Obviously didn't get enough on it, and they made him pay. Ernesto Farhado, you know, he's probably six foot two, six foot three, but I feel like right now for Merchant and Pointer, he probably probably looks like he's eight feet tall on the other side of the net. Yeah, and you know they should probably call a timeout here. Now they're just making mental mistakes. They just mistakes. called their timeout. They should do another <laughs> one. You can't take them home with you. You might as well take another one. Ooh. You know, I just must not can see very well back here. Cause yeah, it seems like I say. No, the ball is not out. I'm telling yeah. you. So I think what happened is someone from the crowd called yeah, that out. And that's what Kamoto and Fajardo reacted to. Meanwhile, the lineswoman on the baseline did not call that ball. Ooh, that's a, that's a close ball. That's a great counterattack. So we talked about this early on, is the team that's able to handle those attacking shots and do something with him like we saw Fajardo here. He's ready for this ball to come fast. Even if it's low, he's all over it, and that's a clean winner. Fajardo is so good at counterattacking. 10-4-2. There's another example, and I mean, it's that's the match. So the first U.S. Open championship, first U.S. Open for Fajardo and Kawamoto, walking away with the 19 to 49 gold. How about the Canadians, Fajardo and Kawamoto? Just no doubt, spectacular throughout the match. Impressive, and I have a feeling we're going to see these two youngsters for years to come, Mark. They're going to be tough. That was a dominant performance. I mean, I don't think it's going to set in for a little while, these guys. And uh, I, as a fellow Canadian, I'm pretty proud of them. 11-5, 11-4. Kawamoto and Fajardo leaving no doubt. The championship coronation is coming up next. It's 2021 and we have some good news for you. The Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are back on. So set your calendars for April 17th through the 24th for the biggest pickleball party in the world happening right in Naples, Florida. Make sure to like and follow both the US Open and Pickleball channel to stay up to date with all the latest US Open news. Time now for our champions. The youngsters come here to Zing Zang Championship Court and get it done. Welcome Ernesto Fajardo and Matthew Kawamoto. Gentlemen, nicely done as they don their head sweats hats, of course, sponsored by Head. Gentlemen, a great job here and a championship performance. Now, what's awesome about these guys, we've got Ernesto here. He's 18 years old. Matthew is 22 years old, one of the youngest teams here. And you guys played like champions. You played like veterans today. What makes your combination out there so special? Well, we just, I don't know, we make a great team, you know. We always pump each other up. up. We're, we always, we're always happy, you know, on the court. We, we try to enjoy the moment. We, we have never played on Zing Zang championship, championship court, and the atmosphere is so amazing. So it was a great experience, and we just try to enjoy it. To add to that, we always support each other, and we don't get mad at each other. 
that's what a team does, right? So we always have to support each other, and we're there for each other. That's great. Now, you guys, of course, coming from Canada, you got a great following here. How nice is it to play here at this event, have such a good fan following, and to get the championship, to get it done, to finish, finish the journey? It's amazing. It's amazing. No words can describe it. It's awesome. When we first came here, we thought we, were, we didn't have much support, but look at all this. This is all Canada. <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's amazing support. You know, even from the States, it's amazing. We're just so happy. Yeah, it's an unbelievable experience. It's our first time here, and we're super excited to be here and to have so many fans supporting us. Final question for you guys. You guys are so young. Are we going to be seeing you year after year? Should we get used to your names? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> sure hope so. Yeah. All right, one more round of applause for Hardo and Kawamoto, champions. Yeah.